you know, you get fiber, you know, all the way to your, you know, if you want to call it like a t close to the customer prem, this is more of using fiber and making use of copper uh, in order to get to the customer. So that's, you know, GFAST. Um, the G, so we had introduced uh, two designs um, last year. Uh, I think it was during the September time frame. Uh, we did one with uh, Scipio and another one with Broadcom. So there are two specs out there. Um, it's very similar in nature on what it does. Um, we have the 16-port DPU. That's kind of what AT&T uses widely. Um, it's used in MDUs um, as well as, you know, um, single family homes too. That's the common um, model we have. Um, and also do both coax and twisted pair. Uh, coax is predominantly used in the MDUs um, in twisted pair otherwise. Um, in the second gen, in the first gen we have, we, we've already deployed GFAST, the 106 model. Uh, this is the 212 which will get to more than one gig uh, speed. Um, and one of the key uh, requirement is to be able to reverse power the DPU. Uh, what you mean by reverse power is uh, use the customer um, facing ports to power the DPU. So you basically customer is you know powering up the DPU. Uh, the challenge here would be you know when you do have an SR3 that's kind of the you know at the customer prem um, that's a 21 watt limit. Um, so you would have to bring up the DPU, the full DPU, even with one customer. So just one customer should be able to power up the whole DPU. So that's usually the challenge with the reverse power feed. Um, we're kind of still, you know, doing some um, parks and things like that to make it more efficient. Um, that's the challenge area uh, in this design. And in terms of uplinks, um, you can use one gig um, Ethernet or, or you know or GPON and XGSPON. I think with the 212, since it does more than a gig, um, I see we would probably use a lot of the XGSPON as the uplink rather than GPON. Um, and I include the BMC as an option here. Um, today we do not have any BMC in in GFAST. Um, so that would be kind of a, an addition to, you know, what we have today. I, I guess here, I, I don't have a good, meaning there's not a, a standalone chip for BMC. We could look at maybe software uh, hosted on the net network processor, um, you know, something along that line. So I have a couple updates here. Um, th these would be like the updates that I would you know, put it into the next version, um, just kind of bringing it up here to, you know, hear feedback. Um, so there is an existing network processor in the design in the, or in the spec today. Um, and those, I mean, there is a, I mean, two, there are two designs. I'll kind of go over the block diagram zone. Uh, one is using like a 2.5 gig to the G, GFAST DPU and other using a 10 gig. Um, in that, um, I think Intel also has another uh, network processor, which is a PON Mac as well. So that's one option we could introduce to the spec. And also, there are discussions about um, using an FPGA, you know, in in, in here, uh, which can do with or you know without the PON Mac, um, because I know several providers, you know, including at and we are you know we we have an option to do uh, SFP PON Mac. Uh, in which case you wouldn't need this functionality inside a, inside a network processor. So kind of you can save power here. Um, so that, that's, those are the couple options you can look at for a network processor in the DPU. Okay. So this is the one with the Broadcom spec. Um, so here you will see the network processor. Um, and here you have like multiple 2.5 gigs um, going to the DSP. Uh, these are like four port DSP um, operating at 212 uh, megahertz uh, frequency. Again, this would do both uh, coax and uh, TP, like I said. Um, again, it's got the reverse power feed um, and be able to you know, uh, power up using one port. Similar uh, design is with the Scipio. It's pretty much, you know, very, it's, it's very identical. Um, this is where, you know, 
I'm planning to kind of introduce the Intel processor and we can make use of the 10 gig, um, 10 gig ports here. Uh, here, one of the key uh, thing that we're also doing in the standards is trying to get flow control. Uh, today, the, we, we do not have flow control supported for 10 gigs. So that's one of the gap we've identified in the standards and it's back in ITU to make that a standard. Um, it's right now on a one gig or a 2.5. Um, so that's an additional work that we're doing in the standards. So apart from you know the the board design itself, um, we also kicked around the idea of wiring adaptation module. Um, so where you can have this is more of the connectors. So where you can have you know coax or TP, um, and there's also modules that can do reverse power feed as a separate unit uh, rather than your DPU. Um, I have not heard back much about you know if this is really a, a path forward or not. Um, so it's kind of, I mean, we have the draft there, um, so we haven't made any updates recently. Um, if there are interest in doing this type of a module, um, I think, you know, I would like to hear more from the operators as well. Uh, right now, the DPUs, you know, they're usually, you would have a SKU for a twisted pair and a SKU for a coax. Uh, that's kind of how we have it today. So this will kind of, you know, um, take the requirement out and you can have one SKU for a DPU and then mix and match with the different connectors that you want to, want to you know, deploy. It just, I guess it's just more flexible and this shows a module. Uh, Lear Networks, you know, we worked with them in the past and they, you know, done some demos here. Uh, where you kind of take all of the reverse power feed out of your box, that's kind of a standalone, along with all of the connectors. Um, so you would just have like a standard connector going into the DPU um, that can, you know, that can be a common SKU uh, for the operators. And we also had a few other um, spec um, I, I know at one point there was interest for a single port um, DPU where you basically, you know, it's more like fiber to the prem or to the house, but then you don't, if you don't want to rewire inside the home, you could still use copper, um, you know, whether it's coax or twisted pair. So I think single port had a little bit of, um, meaning at least at the time, a little bit of traction. Uh, but then, in, you know, I'm not really seeing a lot of use case um, because people generally just take fiber all the way and use fiber. Um, so that, I, I think there is a small market um, that may still require this, but we just haven't had the volume, I should say. Um, so it's still there. So if anyone is interested, we can kind of, you know, work together and, you know, uh, make a spec there. Uh, it would apply to the same thing for the four port and eight port designs as well. Um, though we kind of introduced, AT&T introduced this, uh, we, I think our volume has been more towards a single, uh, towards a 16 port. So that's where we've been focusing our, um, you know, our efforts on. So if there are, you know, other providers who would like to see this, you know, I'm open to, you know, collaborating with them. And also again, feedback, if, you know, if you have any feedback on improvising existing spec, I'm kind of open to that as well. Um, you know, before we kind of, you know, go through the approval process. Hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, but at least uh, in the next few months, we'll kind of get a good spec out there for GFAST and close on the existing two specs. I don't know That's if it's kind of worth what I um, bringing up here or not, but the sure. one thing I've heard offline uh, on the email from other carriers is that after 16 ports, it looks like a single port unit was the next most popular thing. That um, You can think of it like a replacement for the original outdoor ONT. It used to go to the side of the house and then you'd worry how you'd get in. Well, now they've got a way to get in and it was with G.Fast and so you could use either coax or twisted pair and in a lot of the European fiber regulatory regimes, each customer gets a fiber, 
um, but a lot of them don't want you to drill through their 700 year old dwelling and whatnot and so they that that was the story I heard why they think a single port unit made sense right right I think I've heard it from maybe Orange. I think they had some interest. Um, they did, and right. so did, did yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that might be that regulatory regime. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I think internally, <clears throat> when I was discussing, it's still kind of a very, uh, you know, meaning I, d I don't know if we still have a business case for that, mm -hmm. um, at least on the AT&T side. Uh, so that's one reason I haven't really pushed it. Okay. But like I said, you know, if other operators are interested, we can, you know, I'm definitely more For open sure. to working that. I think it's it's a matter of time, right? When you, when you have a need, you'll probably start deploying it. Okay, um, if no other questions, that's all I had. Thank you. Oh, there was a, no? Oh, so. hey Dave. So go ahead. Well, it, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's different, but it's, uh, it's mainly working through the standards. Uh, today, it's, it's, I think it's a standard, if I recall the name, number correctly, G.999.1. Uh, that's the flow control standard, and today it's only on the one gig, if you actually look at it. But, you know, with the 212, you know, we've been using it, the chips or the NPUs, they do support on a 2.5 gig, but it's not widely supported on a 10 gig interface. So it's a little bit more on, I think, working through the buffering and, you know, those type of numbers. Um, because I think there's like X on and X off. Because if you're not, meaning you, you don't want to send packets um, faster than you can receive, right? So, right, yes, it's a phosphate, right? yes, exactly, right. So that's the part we're working through the standard. So the, you know, the silicon, you know, manufacturers can start supporting that standard. Okay, because I think there are just, like you said, it's just the X on and X off, uh, some latency numbers that needs to be worked on. Right, exactly. Okay, okay, yes. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sumitra.